Israel's military is saying that Israeli troops have killed more than 50 Hamas gunmen during the ongoing raid of Gaza City Shifa Hospital. The IDF adding the raid, which did begin Monday, also led to the capture of at least 180 people described as, quote, suspects. Now, in the meantime, Israel's prime minister has agreed to send a team of Israeli officials to Washington to discuss the impending Rafa operation. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan saying both sides are looking to make clear to the other its perspective. I do want to bring in Fleur Hassan Nahum, the deputy mayor of Jerusalem for foreign relations, economic development, and tourism to discuss all of the latest developments here. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Thank you so much. Of course. Well, first off, I do want to talk about the operation there at Shifa Hospital. Explain to me the significance and importance of that operation as a whole. Well, first of all, you have to, we have to understand that Hamas has spent a great deal of all of the foreign aid that's been coming in over the last few decades, building a terribly complicated infrastructure, subterranean infrastructure of terrorism. So it's not like they build tunnels under hospitals, they build hospitals over tunnels. And that's how it's been going. And so unfortunately, even though Israel a few months ago already had thought that it had cleared all of the terrorists, but many more remained and many more came through the tunnels. <clears throat> and so now we're at the point where we really have to go back in and make sure that the area is neutralized from terrorist gunmen. We've talked a lot over the last several months about a possible hostage release and ceasefire deal. We know at this point that there are still more than 100 people that are held hostage by Hamas. They're in captivity there in Gaza. Does it appear that we are any closer to a deal being reached for their release? Well, unfortunately, and this is really very sad, the Israeli hostages are to Hamas and its leadership a, a strategy for defending themselves and saving their own lives. And so Sinwar, who's the big mastermind of the October 7th massacre, is surrounding himself with hostages. Now, we are a little bit closer to a deal today than we were a week ago, but it doesn't mean that we're close to a deal. Um, the teams, the negotiating teams from Israel, including the head of the Mossad, uh, Barnea, have gone off uh, to Qatar to see if something can be agreed. We had broad strokes of an agreement, but again, it, sometimes what happens is that in the Hamas leadership itself, there is dissonance between what Ismail Khania, who's sitting in Qatar, is willing to give and what he can then convince Sinwar, who is subterraneanly like a coward hiding in the Gaza Strip, what he is willing to give. And so I think that even though we're closer than last week, we're still very far. And we pray for the return of our innocent hostages every day, including elderly people, including a one-year-old baby. Now, we know that protesters, and we've been covering this, have blocked some of those major roads in Jerusalem and in Tel Aviv. What does that say to you overall? Well, I think I have to make clear what the protest protesters are protesting about. These are not anti-war protests, and it's very important for your audience to understand it. The majority of the state of Israel understand that we have to dismantle Hamas, and we have to bring back our hostages. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with these genocidal terrorists, the only way to do that is by going to war with them. They, they started the war. I want to remind everyone, we didn't want this war, but they started it and they took our innocent civilians and they murdered our innocent civilians at home. And now we have to unfortunately go in there, a war that we had no choice about. Uh, and that's the situation that we're in right now. And we hope that we can bring this to a quick end, but the people who don't want to finish the war are exactly the same people who started this war. And that really is the saddest thing. We've seen a lot of back and forth between the Biden administration and Chuck Schumer here in the U.S., as well as Netanyahu. Going back and forth there, uh, they are going to send a delegation, Israel is, over to Washington to discuss some of the differences there. How has the U.S. relationship with Israel changed, if at all, since October 7th? 
Well, I think it's a fallacy to think that Israel and the U.S. have always agreed on every policy, on every war. This is not the first time this has happened. Uh, we know that in the 1973, there was a movie that came out recently, Golda. We see also a tension between Kissinger and Golda Meir uh, about the 73 war. And the, the, the situation is like this. Like I mentioned earlier, we didn't start this war. We didn't want this war. And now that we're in this war, we need to win it. And I think that the United States are under pressure um, not to let Israel go into Rafah because they believe that there could be a humanitarian crisis there. Um, and I actually believe that Israel has a plan in place in order to protect the innocent as much as we can. But it's very difficult protecting the innocent when it's the very Hamas that is putting those innocent people in harm's way. The number two point of Hamas's defense strategy are its own people are its own civilians. Why? Because they know that the United States and Israel and other countries around the world actually care for their civilians more than they care for their civilians. And so part of their strategy is to create as much of a humanitarian crisis as possible amongst their own people so that then Israel will be pressured by the United States or the European Union to actually not enter Rafa. But ultimately, you can't avoid the inevitable. The inevitable is that the hostages are in Rafa, that the uh, head, the mastermind terrorist Sinwar is in Rafa, and also the four battalions of Hamas terrorists that are left are in Rafa. So if we don't go to Rafa, we cannot win the war. And so is the United States asking Israel not to win this war that we didn't start. So hopefully they will find a way to get through those differences so that we can actually go in and finish the job. On that same note, would you still describe the offensive in Rafa as quote unquote imminent? Does it sound like it could, I mean, literally happen any day now? I think that was the plan. The plans uh, to go into Rafa were approved last week. And I think the only reason that we haven't gone in yet is to give a chance to this hostage deal. We know the hostages are in Rafah. And so if Hamas don't actually uh, sign a deal with us, we will have to go in and rescue them or try our best to rescue them. But those are the terrible choices that we have. I want to talk about what's going on over to the north right now. Do you see Israel declaring war against Hezbollah anytime in the near future? I think that ultimately, you know, we have to understand that Hezbollah is funded by Iran. And this, and even with Hamas, this is a much bigger war. And I think sometimes people around the world don't understand that this is not a localized war between Israel and Hamas. Israel is representing the free world, and Hamas is representing jihadi Islamism coming from Iran. I know that the Arab, the moderate Arab countries actually do understand it. Saudi Arabia understands it and the UAE understand it. And that's why they haven't rolled back the Abraham Accords agreement, because they understand that we all share the same enemy, which is this jihadi mentality coming and being exported from Iran. And so I don't know whether a war will happen imminently. All I know is that from the 8th of October, Hezbollah has been attacking with missiles the north of Israel. I know that there's almost 100,000 evacuees in Israel, people who live within 10 kilometer border of the northern border, who've had to leave their homes and they don't even know when they're going back. These are people who've left their businesses, their children have left their schools, they've left their homes, because we don't know when a war is happening. And so I hope that the Americans who are being very, very, I think they're being very, very uh, resolute with Hezbollah and with Lebanon that they should they shouldn't be starting a war right now, and they should be going back, uh, backing up behind the Litani River, which was part of the deal for the ceasefire for the last war that we had with Hezbollah. If Hezbollah actually do what they're supposed to do according to an international agreement, then there won't be a war. It's really up to them. All right. Deputy Mayor, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? I think ultimately I want people to understand that it it's Israel today, but we're facing a much deeper existential threat as the free world, as a liberal world. And I believe that everybody should be supporting Israel in a war that eventually if we don't stop these people, they're going to get to the rest of the world.
All right. Thank you again for taking the time to be here with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Josh.